Okay, Houston, we have a problem. Fission and fusion is not understood because the nucleus is not understood. Protons and neutrons are not just one big ball, like a neutron would be this and a proton would be that, and together they become deuterium, or tritium is three of them. They claim two protons and one, I mean uh, two neutrons and one proton. All right, now, when they crash these together, what they're going to come out on the other end is a helium, which is these two and these two. And then they say they got a high energy neutron. Well, where did that come from? Why is the energy there? It's not a high energy neutron. It's one of these splashed into all of its bits and pieces, which is worth one neutron, which is about 1,836 electrons go flying off from that joining. All right, because it comes, it, it becomes stable into helium. All right, from these unstable hydrogens, and gives off a bunch of little particles. They just go flying off as individual particles. It's not one just got a gigantic neutron. That's what they can't get out of their mind is the standard model. There is no giant proton and giant neutrons. They don't exist. They're particles that are in balls like this. All right, and they are very unstable in their smallest forms. Hydrogen is just barely held together. You give it a spark, and the explosion is just phenomenal. I'm going to show you in a science teacher's explosion. Watch this. Okay, this is my area. I understand this extremely well, and it, because I understand it so well, all of this is really wrong. This deuterium and tritium, these are two types of hydrogen. Then there's also hydrogen 1, which is raw hydrogen, which we always say, oh, it's hydrogen 1. It's just one proton, one electron. No, there's hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3, and then you get up into helium. These are just nothing more than masses of particles. And each one of these that they think is a proton or a neutron is... 1835 or 1836. That's the only difference. Does 1835 make a proton? 1836 make a neutron. And a normal hydrogen is just going to be one of these and one more electron whoops, that surrounds it and wants to get in, but it says, no, we have plenty. We have enough. Stay away. We're, we're stable at where we are. And hydrogen is very unstable very unstable. You put a spark to that and it explodes like an atomic bomb, and I mean literally. Now, you make two of these like this. All right? That's all this is. One of them has one more electron than the other. Now, now you have here, you have two of these plus one more, so you have three. Now, what they want to do is force them to come together, so now you have five of them coming together. And they want that to drop down to four in the helium and give off a whole bunch of energy and a neutron. Well, all you're gaining, really, like, I, I mean, it's, it's like an electron's, uh, uh, I mean, a, um, a proton's worth of electrons. But to make them smash like this and create all this energy, they're taking more energy than they're going to get back. Okay, this is from Alex Smith channel, and this is hydrogen oxygen balloon explosion. Now, this goes back quite a few years, nine years ago this was put up. And this teacher did a great job. He's got some explosive gases in here, which are not really, really extremely explosive. When he gets down to the hydrogen and oxygen, we're, it's serious. Now watch. Uh, he's saying it's going to come out at you radiate out. You know, they may feel a little bit of a concussion. Alright, he looked to me like he might have had a little more in some of them than others, or they were a different gas, I'm not sure. But this I do understand. He's got hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, H2 and O2, in here. 
when he just throws a little spark into it, it's going to all break into pieces. And what's going to end up happening is you're going to get water in the air, two H2Os, and then you're going to get a hydrogen converted into, I mean oxygen converted into, a hy into hydrogens, they think. What you're really going to get is a ton of extra electrons shot off into the air, and then when they if they when it condenses into the water particles because of the concussion. All right, I hope I mentioned the fair use. I always do the fair use act in an Alex Smith channel. Now here goes. Watch this. When he explodes this, the explosion can literally blow out your eardrums if you're not careful. And he st states that, but I think the kids thought he was kidding. Listen, watch this. Here, let me go back to hear that. Listen. <laughs> These kids freaked out. I don't blame them. Did you see that little explosion? That bomb? What, what would happen? What did happen? What is this? That's smoke? No, it isn't. That's water. That is water because of the two H, the two hydrogens and the oxygens combined, but they gave off that a big radiation of electrons. Of little bits and pieces of these it went flying everywhere. That's the energy. The concussion smashes into your eardrums and can literally blow your eardrums out. You just heard it. And what happens is you lose one of these hydrogens, turns into bits and pieces, and then they we congeal back down into water. It's because of the combustion com compression. Anybody understands compressed air knows that water forms in the compressor. You have to let the water out every now and then because anytime you have any kind of um, atmosphere together under compression, it forms water. It's just like you saw because of the compression. Now there's a lot of new research in this area and I'm telling you what, I've been stirring up a lot of water myself. Now here's, they, they just put the um, Large Hadron Collider back in action and they're getting some serious reactions. I don't know if this was done there or not, but everybody's trying to get into this fusion and they they literally don't understand what the particles they're fusing together are. They don't know about these two, two particles and make everything. I don't believe. If they do, I'd like to know about it. This just came out today. So they're trying to break this megajoule record. And they're not, they're not getting there. They had one that did it re pretty, really good, and then after that, they couldn't get it there. Now, I guess they're getting close again. Okay, my friends. If you are any kind of scientist whatsoever, physics guy, any of this stuff, energy, you are in for a treat. <laughs> and it's on me. Now, nuclear fusion. I can tell you right now, this is not understood. They think the sun is powered by nuclear fusion. And what is nuclear fusion? It, nuclear fusion reactions power the sun and other stars in a fusion reaction. Well, what is a fusion reaction? Two light nuclei, which is the nucleus of two small atoms like hydrogen, merge to form a single heavier nucleus, a bigger one, and they give off energy. The process releases energy because the total mass of the resulting single nucleus is less than the mass of the two original ones together. So when they combine, they give off a whole bunch of stuff which is literally energy. Well, what is energy? What's energy? E is energy equals mass basically. And then they threw in a C squared, Einstein did. But energy does equal mass. I go along with that. But mass is a whole different story than just the weight of something. Mass is the impact value. And we created the impact value to do nuclear fusion and fission by using the Warren effect. Let me explain to you exactly. I'm going to show you fission happening right here in my shop. 
Okay, let's talk about fission and fusion. Here's Don Lincoln from Fermilab. He says these are the two smallest particles that exist, a fixed one and a gooey little energetic one. And here's exactly what he says. In summary, the extended particles have a fixed size. That's the big black one. They may have a fuzzy edge, which they do, I agree. The point-like particles are mathematical abstractions with zero size. Well, I can't totally agree with that, but I can't disagree with it either. Even that zero size particles have an, electri have an extended effect due to their effect of their field surrounding them. So here's the black one, and here's the other one. Now let's see what we have discovered here in Mud Fossil University. Okay, so there's Fermilab's particles. Well, guess what? There's our particles, and they are the identical same particles. Only we could photograph them using CMOS technology, the same technology that CERN and everybody else uses. And these are the particles that Fermilab says are the smallest particles that exist. And I agree that because this is from light. This is from a laser, all right? Black and white particles together. This shows their energy values. There's the black one with the glow around it. Exactly what Donnie Lincoln says. No, no difference whatsoever. And they have seen this happen in their accelerators. They have seen those separate. And what do they cause? They cause on the muon, the black ball, the fixed particle to go all by itself. Fixed never changes. You see, it's fixed. It came in that way, it left that way. The white one comes in that way as a white ball right here. But when it goes through the accelerator, it splits from the black. That's fission. Fission means to divide. That's division, fission, at the venturi. Now, only the white particle, the squirty one here, can get through. It's called electron showers. Fully understood. They can't do it. We can do it. They're trying to hit things head on. We're squirting them through a tiny compression. That's the key. And this is what the result is right here, is acceleration, first of all, of that particle, and it is a particle, here it is right there. All right, that particle accelerates like hell, takes off like a rocket ship, and goes through the Venturi, creating enormous amounts of reactivity here. Now, I've been talking to, I think it's from Germany or somewhere, about this is also can be used for propulsion in rocket ships out in outer space. Very simple and free, basically free. No, no drive mechanism whatsoever other than using light to push out the back end and then it would go this way. So if they're pushing this way, this is going to go that way. Right now we're just squirting from this direction and we're creating all of this havoc. All right, but if this was inside of a spaceship, that spaceship would be going that way, the same speed this is going that way. Rocket ship, faster than light. Okay, my friends, this is going to be an exciting day. We're going to start the Zoom meetings, and we're going to be talking about the particles that make up everything there is. This is light. This is only light. We didn't do the same thing that CERN does using gigantic protons to smash them together. This is little bitty light. And we literally accelerated the particles of light. And they are particles. And they can separate causing fission and fusion. Let me elaborate. Alright, so how about if we just test this out? Just test it out. I'm not asking for a big project. We need to just verify somewhere in a lab that we can separate these particles and extract excessive amounts of energy, which means we get free energy. This stuff is on the shelf right now. Lasers are dirt cheap. What we would use to absorb the energy is like a solar panel-ish thing, very, very inexpensive. All solid state, simply nothing more than an engineered Warren effect Venturi to separate the particles. Then we need to, you know, we need a little engineering, a little development, and then of course you're just going to feed it into a grid, but a grid that you can carry in your hand, not one that's got to be sitting somewhere in the woods or somewhere, you know, a big gigantic building and then pumped it out. You carry these things around with you. I have something here, hold on. I show this, and all this is is a Geiger counter, but for something about this size, 
if we can get the energy back that they're talking about, no problem having something like this power your car, your house, take it out and run on your cabin or what, you know. The amount of energy they're talking about, if you can separate these particles, which we did, absolutely no question we separated. If that's true, these are in trillion electron volts. These were in the millions of electron volts. It's thousands of times more. Originally, they said 200 times more. That's why I put 5 watts, 1,000 watts. Now they're talking trillions of electron volts here versus millions here. So even if, even if you took 1 billion here, all right, a trillion is 1,000 billion. <laughs> I mean, it's a thousand times. Anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter. If you can get excess energy, we can make it, scale it up, do whatever we want. And this is the new model that has to be looked at very carefully because I've shown the new, new neutrinos, electron neutrinos. I've shown fission. I've shown fusion. I've shown extreme quantities of energy which are visible. So either you can accept it or you can deny it and walk away from it. Or uh, you don't have to accept it. You have to think about it. You have to consider it. That's all I'm asking.